What's doing everyone? It's Plumber Mike, Kelvin SSB, and we're about to give you some more great content. We're on our way to the North Shore of Long Island. We're going to Kings Point, 11024 zip code. We got, it looks like we're gonna have an in, a failed indirect water heater because the relief valve and expansion tank is leaking. I don't know how the expansion tank is leaking, but I bet you we have an indirect failure because the homeowner said someone already replaced the expansion tank and the relief valve. So stay tuned guys. Peace out. Garage, us. Mm -hmm. It's odd. Yeah. They didn't ring the bell yet. Yeah, and uh, this is not the time to play Scooby Doo. Exactly. It's not the time to play Scooby Doo, that you said. Yeah, man, we don't investigate horrible things and shit. Alright. How you doing, guys? How are you? Just so you know, you're the first people I've had in my house, besides my parents, since March. Okay. All right, so please come on in. No problem. We'll try to keep our distance. Hey, thanks for inviting us. Yeah. Welcome. So, somehow to break the, uh, one way to break the mold, right? Yeah, nothing like a plumbing problem, right? Yeah, we'll take care of it. Let's see what's going on. Just close the door. I, I got to warn you, please be careful with the stairs. I'm sorry. We what's wrong with the stairs? We put a lot of shit over here. Oh, no, 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 nothing wrong with the stairs. It's just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. Just, you know, no problem. Mind the gap or whatever. No problem. Tell me what's been going on. Um, so we moved into this house about seven years ago. Okay. Uh, it was a new construction when we bought it. So all this stuff has kind of been untouched. First time homeowner. I didn't know this stuff got to be maintained. Um, so the gas boiler thing. Yes. Running on natural gas. Yes. I saw a bunch of water on the floor. Okay. What did you all do? Right. I told you this. Okay. <laughs> I don't see any water now. I try to dry it. It happened once. So I don't think it's the it's the valve. Um, okay. I think it's this. This sound, Oh, I I, un, I, un, I went on YouTube and they said check the thing and I opened it and a bunch of water came out. Really smelly, dirty water. How much of that did you do? How much came out? Yeah, how much? How long did you push that in for? I didn't even push it in. I literally took the cap off and it came out. Oh, so well, that's, I, that's I, abnormal. I, yeah, so I assume it's just shot. And it's got to be replaced. That's why I call. Okay. And again, it's just this unit. The other unit's fine. The, the no problem, we're good. So, to confirm, this seems okay. I opened it, but it was dripping though. No, it, 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 it poured out. It poured, it poured out. out. I had the pan here, and you know, I just left it here like for months. And then okay. I came down one day just for whatever, and there was a ton of water on it. Not a ton, but you see this kind of staining. This is yes. just from the last, from like the two weeks ago, or whenever when it happened, and it happened once. I don't know what that is. Corrosion. Bad or not an issue? Oh, that's that's a leak, but it rusted itself shut. Okay. This is radiant heat. I mean, you guys know this. Does this need to be maintained also? You have radiant heat and just one, how many parts of the house? Just, just the... Uh, kitchen, bathroom, just, probably? Yeah, just kitchen, kitchen, bathroom on the main floor. Okay. Not in the upstairs. And not, not anything over here. So it's kind of... So the pressure appears to be normal. Let's uh, turn on a few heating thermostats. Let's see what this thing does. You want, you want me to do that upstairs? Yes. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's raise up the temperature in a few zones. I'd like to see how this thing uh, operates. And we'll take it from there. Okay, I thought this was hot for hot water. This says you heat and hot water. Oh, is that right? So this sends heat to this unit? Correct. And you have probably multiple units like this uh, in the house. One here, one in the attic. Yes, and then you have uh, and then you have your radiant heat. Yeah, so you have a total of four zones in your boiler. One is your indirect water heater. Yeah. One is one of those. Another is one of those. And the other is your radiant system. Got it. Got it. So let's raise up uh, the, just the heat um, for the, uh, that comes out of the vents. Pretty self-explanatory. Wayle McLean, CGA5, I want to bet. Yep, CGA5. It's the, uh, it's got the draft, uh, the inducer motor, so it's power vented, as you can see, in a stainless steel B vent. We also have an indirect fired water heater. We have this expansion tank up there. Which you can notice, it's definitely weighing down. 
But this tank is kind of full. Oh yeah, that tank is full. Luckily, fortunately, we have an isolation valve right there, but we're gonna recommend that tank to be replaced. And since he was playing with this, we'll change that out as well. Take a look at the relief valve. Might as well do that same time. All right, so that last service call with the drip and relief valve, the leaky expansion tank, I tell the guy, listen, uh, you have an ST12 on your, like this here, on your indirect water heater. It's full, you see the pipe is actually bowing out like that, right? Um, I said, we need to replace the ST12. We have an extra number 30 on your boiler uh, that's full and also want to replace the relief valve on the boiler. And he goes, well, it's only a $15 part, so you know, let's not replace the relief valve. And uh, I, just, I told the guy, listen, if I'm not doing the job the right way, I'm not doing it at all. So don't take any offense to it, but have a nice day. No charge, be gone, all right? And he goes, oh, the relief valve is only $15. And I'm like, all right, so why don't you go buy one and uh, put it in? <laughs> so <laughs> we left, but literally his expansion tank, if you, if you saw the pipe was attached to it, was bowing out because there was so much weight on the expansion tank. It was crazy. Anyway, we're, uh, we're here. We have a customer that has two of these Upanor uh, manifolds. There was one here. It's on the floor over here now. If you guys remember the Desert Air, same client. There they are. They were leaking. I had to isolate everything. And we're putting in the Upanor EP seven loop manifold. And uh, Kelvin just went to the truck to get the ram set. I'm gonna shoot some two by four, so two by four, yeah, two by four to the wall and um, get it done. Got the ram set, we got a charge. I used the yellow tip. I may have to shoot it in a couple times, but we put that in there like that. I got the nail with the washer. Got that right there. And I already marked out where my two by fours are gonna go with the manifold. And yes, I'm gonna have to bonify that, but we're just gonna line that up right there. Boom, and bow, like that, bow. Give me another charge, Kelvin, the nail. Put that bad boy in right there, bow. And that ain't going anywhere. I would probably shoot this in again, but look, the wood's starting to split right there, so this is not going anywhere. Kelvin, get another charge in the nail. Come on, Kelvin. Why are you moving like molasses today? Don't you know time is money, Kelvin? And focus the video on what I'm doing, Kelvin. Come on, Kelvin. Oh my, listen, guys, uh, all you guys out there, I'm hiring. I need someone to replace Kelvin because he's just slow as molasses today. I don't know what to do with myself. Anyway. We're gonna set the other block right there. Boom. Bow! Come on, there we go. Oh, he's on the ball this time. Give me the charge. Boom. Got that in there. I swear, I like to have fun. Boom! Look at that. That's solid. It's like the little shy. All right, Kelvin. Isn't she pretty? Got those isolation valves here as well. We'll put the, the temperature sensors there, those little thermostat thingies. So I had to make some adjustments because of the orientation and positioning of the manifold. So that's our uh, supply water coming in. So Kelvin, what do I need to finish this piping? Uh, Speak up Kelvin so the people can coupling. hear you. Coupling. I need a coupling. One inch, it looks like two inch couplings and a uh, piece of one inch there you go two one inch couplings and a piece of one inch go get the go get a small piece of one inch copper so you can put it in there <laughs> we got kelvin on the ladder <laughs> oh look he's using his noggin actually no he's not kelvin you gotta put a real piece of copper in between the two you have to cut back something and put a longer piece of copper in the middle to connect two couplings because those couplings are right on top of one another aren't they kelvin yes. use your noggin kelvin Oh, why do I have to yell at him sometimes? You know, I yell at you because I care. <laughs>
My, my first boss said that to me all the time, too. Let's see what he's, which one he's going to cut, left or the right side. You know, I should have told him to get the pipe stretcher. Kevin, okay, why don't you get the pipe stretcher? No. <laughs> uh, we pulled that on. I think I pulled that on you before, didn't I? Once. I pulled that on you once, didn't I? That's right. All right, Kelvin's got the Milwaukee M8, M12 automatic tubing cutter. I don't know what he's doing. Just cut the pipes. Keep going until it cuts through, Kelvin. So what are you stopping for? Kelvin, why are you stopping? Cut the pipe until it breaks free. Oh, my God. I swear to God. I don't know. How I am such a saint for tolerating this. Oh, I need so much patience. All right, he's going to attach the pipe. I'm going to try not to yell him anymore, so stay tuned. All right, Kelvin managed to not mess it up <clears throat> using the, the milwaukee uh m18 press machine got the one inch draw up there i got one inch press viega fitting Comp shout out to supplyhouse.com real people real service you know i place an order 10 o'clock at night i get the next day i don't know why he's pressing the button you pull it out do a full cycle since you held it down twice already I'll put it on without touching the button and getting it started again. You better make sure the pipe is You see, I think I hired people from the group home. <laughs> I crack myself up sometimes. All right. I got my Milwaukee M12 uh, PEX expansion tool. I was going to reuse them, but, you know, for the amount of, I guess I wouldn't say the amount of money the guy's spending, but I might as well just do them. I have them. Replace the adapters. So I'm gonna do that right now. We're working on zone number seven, which is here. Obviously this is PEX B, which is crimp PEX, and they adapt to see that to PEX A. So I'm just gonna throw on a ring right here. Again, one-handed Mike is still faster than two-handed Kelvin. <laughs> I don't know where he is right now, by the way, but let's get the, uh... oh, this is impossible. I can't do it as a one hand. Oh, I gotta wait for Kelvin. Sandbox. All right, so I got my ring on there. I got my one inch expansion tool on there. And one, two, three, four, five. Voila. What's great about pre uh, PEX expansion that this pipe is engineered in such a way, it's, it's cross-linked inside. It's engineered in such a way that this ring and that pipe, its job, the its entire life, is to try to go back into size, which is why I love PEX A instead of PEX B. PEX A, also known as expansion PEX, PEX B is crimp, right? Its entire life, it's gonna spend trying to go back in size. Another great thing about PEX A is, if I were to kink this, right, with PEX B, I gotta throw it out. Put a coupling and throw it out. With PEX A, I can take a hot hair dryer or heat gun and it'll go back into shape. Pretty cool stuff. All right, I got 13 more loops to do and then we'll energize everything and then I can do the wiring for all the zone valve actuators. Stand by. All right, we are now purging all seven loops individually. So I have water. We're gonna put a garden hose to a laundry sink. And if you notice this side thing right there is open and Every, this one's open because it's all the way down like that. And that's open. And I'm using this hose and I'm purging it out. Just like that. Very easy. I love Upanor manifolds. By the way, compliments to supplyhouse.com. Real people, real service. That's where I get most of my, you know, unique material. You know, if I want an expansion tank, you know, my supply house is trying to give me, you know, a bullshit, you know, oops, sorry, didn't mean to curse. Trying to give me a different brand that I don't like. I like x -Troll. Um, a lot of supply houses are doing that now, trying to save money and give you cheaper stuff, but not me. Sorry, not for me. So I got two done, I got five to go, and then we'll do wiring for the uh, zone actuators. All right, working on the zone act uh, actuators now. So seven zones, you know, I have seven old actuators, and you really don't want to mess up the wiring. So I started with one, two, three, four, I got this access port right here open on my uh, junction box right there and I marked them so this is number one this is number two 
This is number four. That's three. So I'm gonna get those done. One, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven on the others, and then we'll test everything. Love the EP manifold.